Uh, Graham Hauser, joining us from Oregon, has a wide range of flag interests as well as subjects such as ecology and bees. He is presenting his paper on flags in the classroom of a first year teacher. Graham, over to you. Thank you, everyone. Um, good to see you all. Really amazing presentations, very interesting conversations with everyone. So I'm super happy to be here. This is my first year as an official teacher um, starting in the classroom. And I've been working with a school called Access Academy. Um, it's a talented and gifted program within the school. So a lot of students um, testing it at the 99th percentile of the test of national scores with math and literature and also a um, profile um, to submit an application to be in this program. Um, it ranges from grades one to eight. And um, yeah, I work as a special education teacher. So working with a lot of students with strategies to um, help connect with executive functioning and um, connecting with the content and working on projects. So um, this is Access Academy. Um, you know, starting the school year has been very unique to say the least. Um, you know, coming back from a virtual online schooling year to a shared physical space has been kind of awkward um, and challenging, but by intentionally using flags in the classroom, there have been uh, a lot of opportunities for connection. Um, so this is my first year teaching. There I am in the classroom. Um, this is also kind of my first year as a vexillologist, um, really getting into it. Um, I've been seeking to blend the two the two disciplines together. Um, and NAVA has graciously donated um, a lot of flags to me, as, as you heard about the, um, the educator program and, and getting a lot of flags donated. So I've been really using these to put up in the classroom. Um, and I've identified four opportunities this year uh, that I've been using flags intentionally has been aesthetically enhancing the learning environment. Second is connecting with students. A third option, a third variable has been working with teachers in classrooms across disciplines. And then fourth has been launching a school-wide flag design uh, competition. So um, throughout the school year, I've been regularly displaying flags, often coinciding with holidays, uh, events, and seasons. Uh, about every two weeks, I will change the flag or the handful of flags in the classroom. Um, and Displaying flags in the classroom coincides with the self-determination theory of teaching. Uh, it's a macro theory underpinning motivation, uh, motivation student development, academic wellness. Um, and this is important because, as you all know, public school infrastructure uh, is neglected. The integrity is um, literally crumbling. Um, so displaying flags has been a way to cover up the eroding corkboard. Um, cork, cork Behind this was just a lot of um, patches and stuff. And so um, this is not a solution. And I totally advocate for more funding for public schools. But in this situation, um, it's really been a way to kind of enhance the learning environment and cover up these cracks. Um, as you can see, I've kind of, these are the kind of the info papers that I post along with it on the doors and around the classroom, around the flags. Um, but not everyone perceives flags as an enhancement to the classroom. And displaying flags has been recently challenged just in a neighboring school district. And they've actually been banned. Um, and uh, all these um, political quasi or controversial flags, such as pride flags and Black Lives Matter flags, have been uh, banned from a, a neighboring school district. Um, arguing, they're arguing that these banners introduce political distractions and pushing to comfort some students may alienate others. Um, but along with Scott Marion Waring, um, I would argue that all flags are political. And um, it just shows how pertinent vexillology is within a learning environment. Um, here is the progress flag being hoisted on the school for the first time in its existence, over 100 years. Um, the, the school counselor uh, worked out to get this ho hoisted. Um, so yeah, kind of history is being made uh, with flags. Um, it's also been a way to connect with students. Um, displaying flags has been um, a way to talk with others. This is my own family flag I created just a few months ago. Um, students will often ask, what's this flag? Um, it just spurs a lot of conversation. Uh, here is the flag of Peru that was donated through the wild collection um, that I gave to the Spanish teacher. She's put it in her classroom as a, a way to talk about heritage and um, teaching Spanish. 
Um, and knowing about students and then knowing about you and where you come from is um, really frames our potential as knowing students and knowing their potential, kind of knowing where they come from. And um, this teaches from a critical transitional perspective, um, using flags to um, think about why, who we are, what we are, and how we're changing um, is really just um, a portion of the becoming. We're all becoming into something more, and especially students. So um, displaying flags has been a great way of just um, learning about students and then learning about me. Um, working as a special education teacher, I'm also supporting a lot of students with a range of neurodiversity. So um, as mentioned earlier, this has opened up a lot of channels of positive connection, um, emotional and social connection, um, just a lot of questions and, and talking about who we are, what flags we like, why we don't, just um, it's been a really good source of talking about things. Um, and it's really been um, another opportunity of um, self-reflection, um, opening up further dialogue of people groups and human rights. Um, and we, have, we as teachers have you know, an opportunity to create nurturing environments um, where multiple forms of knowledge and identities, locations and perspectives are, are um, hold credence. Um, I think flags in the classroom also um, have a foundation for self-reflective skills, making sense of the world around us. Um, and of course, we as teachers and educators uh, must be willing to also change and challenge our own assumptions and, and grow and, and, and learn as well. Uh, this uh, displayed this flags in February when the invasion of Ukraine started, and specifically with Poland and Slovakia um, taking refugees. Um, let's see, um, displaying flags has also been a great opportunity for cross classroom collaboration, um, working with uh, geography teachers, art teachers, social studies teachers to come in and give presentations about kind of units that they're teaching about. Um, and this um, kind of goes along with uh, a student's collective knowledge, um, really understanding that a lot of students in this particular circumstance really are motivated and pride themselves in trivia and recalling facts and identifying flags has been a really um, great opportunity to get students across domains excited uh, to participate in learning opportunities. Um, it's also a multi-sensory approach to learning. Um, you know, it's optic, it's haptic, um, it's auditory, it's olfactory, you know, smelling the flags. Um, it just kind of really brings teaching to life um, when you can have a physical, a physical thing um, present to represent the symbols and, and history of it all. Uh, this flag is of the Diano people um, talking about kind of the history of Columbus and, and all the, um, the locations there. Um, also, throughout the school year, um, I created a school-wide voting or uh, flag submission design contest. Um, the school, you know, was first to eighth graders, but we were in two different locations as a result of redistricting. And just this next year, they're going to be all at one new location. And so kind of anticipating that, I thought it'd be great to have a school flag to kind of unify everyone at this new location, the, the two grades, the two um, different grade groups together. Um, this was kind of me just kind of throwing out some designs for the students to get inspired by. Here are some results um, using Google Forms, using student voting um, to see uh, what flag was voted in the most, used a ranked choice voting method. Um, these are all the submissions from first to eighth graders. And as you can see, I. Um, collaborated with the art teacher and gave a small presentation about good flag, bad flag, and some designs, but um, it was really challenging to kind of match it up. Um, looking back, I really wish um, could have really um, implemented more explicit teaching about this, but as you can see, students kind of got excited and, and used the atomic motif uh, as the mascot, is the uh, Access Academy Adams. Um, so these were the 11 different designs that were presented. Uh, displayed them in the hallway with a little write-up that the students made about all of the um, symbolism of their flag and, and kind of why they chose to design it that way. 
So had building open through a QR code that students could um, scan, also through um, teachers embedding it into their slides and their online courses so students could just easily click the link and vote on it. So it was all digital. And this was the winning design. Uh, got the most votes, and these are the three runner-ups. Um, a seventh grader is the one who won the design, and after working with them and um, really wanting to kind of get some more options and, and represent kind of the other close ties um, to give three more renditions for a final voting round. So after that was the initial winner, these are the three final um, designs that he submitted. And we once again brought it back to the school community for ranked choice voting. Actually, this one wasn't ranked choice. We just kind of did one for all in these three final designs. Um, you know, this has been an opportunity for students to reflect on their themes of identity, belonging, exploring a symbolic, um, having a symbolic nature of having a graphic design to represent this group of, of learners. And um, this was the winning design. As you can see, it, it won pretty fair and square. Uh, a lot of people just loved, I think, the purpleness of it. A lot of the students did. Um, let's see. Um, having this design, um, having this opportunity has really been um, an opportunity for activity theory, uh, a, an interplay between collective knowledge and um, student action, and having their their voice, their design, their, their, um, their work uh, really present in making something that's going to be um, officialized. So um, activity theory is really aligned with um, you know, student outcomes, positive student outcomes. Um, here is the final design and all the runner-up ones um, I displayed as to let people know. Let's see, and I have a, um, I thought I did. Maybe still up there. Um, I made a booklet with all of the winning designs as well. Um, you can kind of see the, the booklet there. I also handed it out. I also applied to the PTA to get a grant for around $1,000 to print the big three by five flags, um, some outdoor quality ones, some indoor quality ones, and also a lot of hand flags um, to hand out to students. And here is the unboxing of the initial flag with the, with the principal and the winning student. We got it. I pulled them into the office real quick and said, oh, it just got in the mail. Let's open it real quick. And the winning student was like, oh, wait, I, I know just what to do. I've been in Boy Scouts. And he said, principal, hold it like this. All right, on your market set. You know, and and um, he just knew how to, how to display the flag instantly, which was great. Um, here we are at the big celebration, kind of launching the new campus. This is the new school campus where all students were coming in anticipation for next year as a kind of um, celebration. Handed out a lot of the flags. You can see um, the booklet. Handed out a lot of the booklets to the students, really as a way to um, celebrate all of the designs and all of the effort that students went into and just um, really acknowledge the process and um, meaning of having a, a flag to represent our learning community. And here I am hoisting the flag up on the, the main flagpole at the new school. And um, I'm really excited. It's a great new school. I won't be at that school next year. Um, but it's a really cool kind of storybook feeling school building and um, really tall flag pole. Uh, here is the flag itself that a student created with uh, some feedback and uh, the second round of voting. Um, I think what is interesting is that the first flag that they had, you might have seen it in the one of the first pictures of me, they kind of had this banner of the Access Academy Adams in green. There was kind of this kind of um, bright green was, was the color. And so it's interesting to see how the student body voted for this purple and pink um, to kind of be the second generation, the next generation of, of the flags. Here's one of the hand flags that students got. And um, this has been my year of teaching with flags in the classroom. I appreciate your attention. Are there any questions, thoughts, feedback? Yes. So your school are the Atoms? The Atoms. 
Did you know in Albuquerque, in the, at least in the past, there was a high school that was called the Fighting Isotopes? <laughs> oh, that's good to know. All right, I'm going to... All the students, when I go to father's work, you know, in the same area, Look at That's great. All right, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna look that up and, and talk to the principal about yeah, <laughs> as well as possible. Could you tell him? Um, he's, he mentioned that there's another school in Albuquerque. Albuquerque, Mexico. Their mascot is the Isotopes. Yes. Fighting Isotopes. Fighting Isotopes. <laughs> uh, we have a question for one of our uh, viewers. Uh, will you give us a guess how many primary and secondary schools have their own flag? Exactly. Um, I don't think many do. Um, I think flat um, schools have mascots and maybe logos. Um, one of my um, dreams with this is to kind of package this process that I started into kind of a really easily um, easy to use format for other schools to use where kind of they can kind of start the design process for students and voting and all that. So I, I'm not sure about other other schools. I see. Um, yeah, Bard. There's the issue of political controversy with regard to flags. Um, I noticed that you were presenting um, political controversy flags to which you have a positive relationship. Did you present any political controversy flags to which you had a negative relationship? Let's say a Soviet or Nazi flag, or if you had a Korean community or Burmese flag. How did you get around that issue of censorship? Um, I did not. Um, there were, okay, the, the question was did I present any? controversial flags on the other side of the spectrum. Uh, there were a lot of um, pride flags and, and gender flags, but I did not display any um, other controversial flags. Um, there, we did talk about, in one of the presentations I did, we talked about the Mississippi flag being changed and showed an image of that, and that got a lot of, um, a lot of energy from the students um, about seeing kind of the old flag and the new flag. So I know that um, it is controversial, and I think to, to do something like that, I would really um, plan more with the principal and the teachers to really have a, a educational foundation of it. Did your students get to see the Jelezhnedorf flag? <laughs> the Jelezhnedorf flag? That's the Russian city whose flag is a bear wrestling. And oh, yeah. I'm familiar now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Some students knew about that. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> uh, you mentioned that you would like to do the curriculum a little differently than uh, the flag design. And I'm curious, what elements do you think would make it better? Yeah. Um, what elements would make this better to do this again next year? What, what, what have I learned? Since this was a really awkward start of the year with a really lot of um, vacant positions, not much staffing, we were scrambling a lot through the year just to meet quota of adults in classrooms. I really wish um, that I had created a student committee about this and have a handful of students and teachers and staff to also be on the committee to help promote it, to help uh, organize it, to help um, double check things. Because there were some things that I missed just in kind of my fervor of the day trying to get through things. So that's one of the main things I would do. And another main thing I would do is really explicitly teach the principles of good flag, bad flag. Um, I just kind of isolated two or three of the principles, but really would have wanted to make a, a more deeper lesson about that. T Tyler? Yeah, I was going to say Tyler first and Amber. Yeah. Um, uh, two things. One's more of a comment in, in regards to uh, Laura's question uh, when it comes to displaying flags in the classroom. I mean, I also do that. Uh, generally, you know, it, it's less of a spectrum of like, you know, two sides. Um, but like with controversial flags, like pride flags and stuff like that, there are students who positively identify with it, as well as students who negatively identify with it. For the examples you gave, there's going to be a lot more students who negatively identify with that flag than positively. Um, but my question to you is in regards to like sort of pedagogy. Um, I noticed you had a lot of indigenous flags. Is that part of the collection that you received? Um, is, are those flags that you acquired for yourself? And like. Um, how do, how do you use those indigenous flags in your classroom? Okay, the question was about the indigenous flags that I use in the classroom. Um, those were from my own collection of indigenous flags, and a lot of the other flags were from the wild collection that was donated to me, a lot of the nation flags. Amber? Uh, yeah, we have one from the chat. 
Uh, what are the school's colors? If not the colors on the flag, why were those colors chosen? Yeah, um, what, why were the ch these colors chosen? What were the school's colors? There's, there was kind of unofficial colors of being green was kind of the unofficial school color. Shirts had been made in it. There had also been a pink version of the, of the shirt. Um, I'd also seen a black sweatshirt of the school that had been made over past years. So um, purple and pink and kind of the, the different gradients, I can kind of go back to um, one of them. Um, I think just the students responded with it. It was kind of overwhelmingly voted on. And, um, I thought it was interesting how it was, yeah, this color scheme really resonated with the student body and the staff. Yeah. I do have one for myself, yeah. actually. I saw in one of your pictures the, the back of one of your students who was wearing a black hoodie, and that hoodie had the flag of Puerto Rico. Oh, yeah. On the back. Yeah. Was that something that you saw typically, or did you see those kinds of things after you started the script? Oh, yeah. He had that sweater on a lot. He was one of um, the students who would always identify the flags instantly. He'd come in and be like, that's that, that's that, that's that. Um, and he just really um, loved identifying flags. Yeah, uh, that's just a sweater he wore just just on his own. And um, Did other students do that? Too? Other students wore, yeah, some, some stuff with flags on it. Flags were a really big um, uh, kind of trivia pride in this community of learners. They just um, love maps. They love math. They love science. They love sociology. So... Vexiology, vexillology has been a really uh, great avenue to connect and, and connect everyone. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, okay. All right, thank you everyone. Okay, thank you